everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in Unit 5, Analytical Applications of Differentiation. Today's topic is 5.12, which is Exploring Behaviors of Implicit Relations. Enjoy today's notes. All right, welcome to 5.12, Behaviors of Implicit Relations. Um, a heads up that this is the last lesson of Chapter 5, last new lesson of Chapter 5. Uh, and we're talking, uh, we're focusing on uh, how to apply the things we've learned in Chapter 5 in, into implicit relations. Um, I want to remind you that back earlier in this year, back in section 3.2, we talked about implicit differentiation. Uh, and if it's been a while since you've done implicit differentiation, it might be a good idea to go back to that lesson to uh, refresh uh, on how to do implicit differentiation, since that will be coming up quite a bit in this section. Implicit relationships still follow the same rules as functions. So if dy dx, if the derivative is equal to zero or dy, dy dx does not exist at a point, then that point is a critical point. Doesn't matter if it's a function, it doesn't matter if it's an implicit uh, relation. If the second derivative is positive at a point, then the graph is concave up at that point. Um, the differences in this versus what we've been doing earlier in this chapter is that, again, implicit relations frequently don't have uh, any variable by itself. They're equations that uh, you know have x's and y's on the same side, uh, and you're needing to do this implicit differentiation uh, in order to take the derivative of it. Uh, frequently, to find the first derivative or second derivative, you're going to have to plug in both an x and a y value to find that uh, the value of that to determine if it's positive or negative. Uh, let's take a look at this at number one. Consider the curve 3x cubed plus 3 is equal to the natural log of 4y squared in the xy plane. At the point, negative 1 comma 1 half is the curve increasing or decreasing. All right, so going to our knowledge from chapter 5, we know that a function is increasing uh, or decreasing is determined by the sine of f prime of x, uh, or in this case, of dy dx. Uh, the derivative of the function. So we're going to take our original equation that we've got and we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So d dx of 3x cubed plus 3 is going to be equal to the derivative of the other side, the natural log of 4y squared. Uh, if we do that on the left side, since these variables match, uh, this is easy on this side. We've got 9x squared and then the derivative of 3 is going to be 0 since that is a constant. Here on the right side, uh, our x and our y are not the same signs, so we're going to end up with uh, this extra dy dx term when we take the derivative. Here we're going to need to do the chain rule though because we've got a function inside of a function. So the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x and the inside is going to stay the same, so that's 1 over 4y squared. We're going to then multiply by the derivative of the inside and the, in the derivative of the inside is going to be 8y times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. Great. Um, so we're going to need to then find dy dx in order to do this. Um, one way that we could do this is we could say, you know, I could solve for dy dx and make an expression for it. Uh, if I just need to know whether it's increasing or decreasing, I'm going to just check the sign of it by taking these points that they, they gave us. So the points that they gave us here, negative 1, comma 1 half, and plugging those in for uh, x and y, and then solving for dy dx. Um, that's going to be just finding the actual value of the derivative as opposed to finding a derivative function. Um, they have different uses depending upon what they ask for. So 9 times x, which is negative 1 squared, is equal to 1 over 4 times 1 half squared uh, times 8 times 1 half times whatever dy dx is. We'll go up here. So 9 times negative 1 squared is going to be 9. Uh, we then have that that's equal to 1 over 4 times 1 fourth. So that's just 1 over 1 uh, times 8 times a half, so times 4 times dy dx, 1 over 1 is going to be 1, so uh, we can then divide by 4 on both sides, which means that dy dx is going to equal 9 over 4. Um, so key piece here, uh, we, we can see here that the derivative is going to be 9 over 4 at this specific point, um, and so if we're going to determine if it's increasing or decreasing, we can conclude here that, uh, that the function or the, uh, the curve is increasing at the point negative 1 comma 1 half since the first derivative is positive. So since dy dx is greater than 0. 
that is going to be our reasoning for this. And again, very similar to what we've been doing earlier in the year for uh, for chapter five, uh, just sort of mixing in this relation bit where we need to plug in both the x and the y to find the answer. Uh, great, number two, consider the curve uh, x squared minus three is equal to e to the y in the xy plane at the point negative two comma zero is the curve concave up or concave down. Again, reminders from chapter five, we know the concavity is determined by the second derivative. So it's determined by the second derivative, so we're going to need to find that second derivative. So let's take the derivative of both sides first. So the derivative of x squared minus 3 is going to equal the derivative of e to the y. Uh, since our variables match here on the left side, we're going to have just 2x. The derivative of negative 3 is going to be 0. Uh, since that's a constant. And then the derivative of e to the y is going to be e to the y times dy dx. Now in this case, because I'm going to need to find the second derivative, it's going to be really helpful here for me to get dy dx by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by e to the y. Uh, that gives me that dy dx is equal to 2x divided by e to the y. So this is the first derivative statement. Great. Now that we've got that, we're going to need to take the derivative of both sides again. Uh, if we do that, we have the derivative of dy dx is equal to the derivative of 2x over e to the y. Uh, the derivative of the derivative is going to give us our second derivative, so d squared y over dx squared, that's our second derivative. And then if we take the derivative of this part here on the inside, uh, uh, or the right side of our equation, uh, I have something being divided by something else, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule here. So uh, that's going to be e to the y times 2 minus 2x two times e to the y times dy dx all over e to the y squared. So low d high minus high d low all over low squared. I did have to use the chain rule when I took the derivative of this e to the y since these variables do not match. That's where this dy dx term came from. Uh, great. Um, so if we're going to evaluate uh, the, the only thing that I, I would want to mention is, you know, we're going to need to find it at this particular point at negative 2 comma 0. Um, it would be useful here for us to recognize that where dy dx is in, in this equation, we would need to substitute this whole equation over here. So we know that dy dx is 2x over e to the y. We can substitute that in. Um, and so that's going to be useful for us to do, you know, moving forward as we go through this problem. But let's start substituting. So we have e to the 0. So e to the 0 times 2 minus 2 times negative 2 times e to the 0 times dy dx. So that's going to be 2 times negative 2 divided by e to the 0 again. And that's all being divided by e to the 0 squared. So if we simplify anything, the 0th power is 1. So we've got 1 times 2. Then we've got plus 4 times 1, and we've got a negative 4 divided by uh, e to the 0, so that's actually going to be uh, minus 16, so 2 minus 16 in that numerator, and then we've got 1 squared, uh, which is just going to be 1. So this looks like this is going to be equal to uh, negative 14 for that second derivative. So our Second derivative here is negative 14. So what's our conclusion? We want to know whether this thing's concave up or concave down. Well, we can say the curve is concave down at the point negative 2 comma 0 since the second derivative d squared y over dx squared is negative. That's going to be our conclusion for uh, this problem. Uh, and Again, our justification here, we found the first derivative, we used that first derivative to find the second derivative, and then we check the sign, because we know that the sign of the second derivative determines concavity. That's number two, let's move on to the last one, number three. Consider the curve, y cubed minus y is equal to x squared in the xy plane. It is known that we've got the first derivative equation and the second derivative equation. At the point zero comma one on the curve is the point a relative max, relative min, or neither. Justify. Well. Um, in cases like this, you know, we, uh, it, it would be tough for us to actually like, f use the first derivative test 
because we're, we're talking about maxes and mins, right? First derivative test would help us find that, but we wouldn't know uh, like to the left and to the right since this is in a plane. Like you can't have values that are less than or greater than when you have a coordinate, right? Normally we're talking about like x is greater than a value or less than a value. So in cases like this, it's actually really useful to use the second derivative test. So the second derivative test where if we can show that the first derivative is zero, we can then use the sign of the second derivative to determine the concavity and then use that to figure out uh, whether it's a max or a min. So let's do that first. So dy dx, uh, I'm gonna write that like, uh, this line is essentially a such that. So I'm saying dy dx uh, evaluated at zero comma one is gonna be equal to two times zero over three times uh, what, one squared minus one. So that is zero over two, which is zero. So I know that the first derivative is equal to zero. What about the second derivative? If I take the second derivative evaluated at zero comma one, that's gonna be equal to what looks like two over three times uh, one squared minus one minus 24 times zero squared times one, all divided by three times one squared minus one squared. Uh, let's see, so we've got two over three minus one, which is two, and then that's minus zero, so that looks like it's equal to positive one for this. So what do we know? Our second derivative test uh, is gonna tell us, because this is a critical value, right, the, the first derivative is equal to zero, it's a place where extrema could occur, and because we, we have this uh, positive one here, we know that uh, the curve is concave up. It's concave up since this is a positive number, since the second derivative is a positive number. And so in this case, if we imagine just you know thinking about something that's concave up, if it's concave up, what are we gonna have here at the bottom? At the bottom of it, we're gonna have a, uh, a minimum. So we're gonna have a minimum in that case. So our conclusion here uh, is essentially by the second derivative test, but zero comma one is a relative minimum And our reasoning here is since the first derivative, dy dx, equals zero, and the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared, is positive. So this lets us know that this function is concave up, and since it's concave up, we're gonna have a minimum, since we know that the first derivative is zero, which means it's got a horizontal tangent line at that point. That's gonna be it for today's lesson. Um, as usual, we've got some practice for you to check out. Uh, Solutions are posted. Stop by in class or in office hours if you've got any questions, and good luck on your mastery check. Have a great day. Take care.